So it's been quite a while since we've discussed Planet Nine, or I guess the idea behind a hypothetical ninth planet somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system. But it's about time we've discussed it again, because just now a team of researchers released another study providing even more proof for its existence. Or to be more exact, for the existence of something that seems to influence various bodies in a solar system. With the assumption being that it is maybe some kind of a planet. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss Planet 9 once again, and I guess let's start with maybe a bit of a history in regards to videos about Planet 9. I was actually going through some of the oldest videos on the channel, and turns out that over eight and a half years ago, that's basically when the first video on Planet 9 was made. And back then there was a lot of excitement. Mostly because a lot of evidence pointed at its existence. For example, the biggest piece of evidence was from very far away objects beyond Neptune. And specifically objects we usually refer to as TNOs, trans-Neptunian objects. Basically, really large asteroids or dwarf planets, kind of similar to Pluto, with the best example being this right here. This is an image taken by Hubble Space Telescope. And this is Sedna, one of the more mysterious and one of the more distant objects out there, whose discovery actually kind of changed everything. And it was really the discovery of Sedna that even began the conversations about Planet Nine. Its extreme distance from the Sun and its extremely high eccentricity, along with the fact that it's just too far away to be influenced by Neptune, here's basically what it orbit kind of looks like, kind of imply that something else must have influenced its orbit in order to create such high eccentricity. And so at a conference in 2012, a researcher by the name of Rodney Gomes proposed that there might be a planet somewhere out there responsible for this, but possibly responsible for a few more observations. For example, here is one. Notice how a lot of these unusual orbits seem to be sort of in a similar direction. This is referred to as clustering. And this unusual clustering is somewhat difficult to explain unless something really far away and something massive enough forces them to have these orbits. And so this clustering was the main evidence. Then there was the evidence of high inclination. A lot of these orbits are also not in the same plane of orbit as the rest of the solar system. They're very highly inclined, as if something pulled on them in order to make them orbit differently. There's actually a mechanism known as the Kozai mechanism that I think an older video explains better, but in essence this was the other piece of evidence. Or at least some of the strongest evidence. There were actually a few more pieces, but this was enough to start looking. Mostly because a planet here would explain pretty much everything. And although some of the scientists initially did not think this was possible and even tried to disprove this, even a couple of Caltech scientists who initially tried to disprove this eventually basically converted. They started to look for this planet because it kind of made sense. But the thing is, they all accepted the fact that unless we physically find it or physically see it, it's still just a conjecture and is not real. And so thus began an almost decade-long search for the mysterious Planet Nine. For example, using the NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, able to detect even brown dwarfs really, really far away, as long as they emit a little bit of infrared light, and looking at other data from very big surveys such as PanStars. But even after a decade, so far, nothing. Nothing planet-sized, emitting any kind of radiation detected so far. Which resulted in a lot of alternative propositions or potential explanations for why we observe what we observe. I think the one that went viral, we've discussed previously, is the one involving a black hole. Naturally, if you can see it, well maybe it's a black hole. Uh, possibly. And though detecting a primordial black hole in a solar system would certainly be very exciting, here it really felt more like some kind of a cop-out than a physical explanation for what we're seeing. Also, a black hole would probably produce a lot of other effects, and we're not observing this either. But additional observations using even larger surveys or even larger telescopes, such as for example the Dark Energy Survey, known as DESI, we've discussed this previously in the video in the description, ended up discovering even more TNOs or trans-Neptunian objects whose orbits could now be also analyzed. And with over 800 now in database, some scientists realized that maybe a previous clustering or previous observations were actually just some kind of a bias. In other words, observations from those few objects we've seen before seem to completely disappear once you add a few hundred more objects whose orbits are basically all over the place. And so a lot of scientists basically concluded that 
maybe the Planet 9 hypothesis was a little bit premature. With most of this even explainable with just orbit of Neptune and the evolution of the solar system over 4.5 billion years. But this obviously still did not explain Sedna and a few other objects and a few other observations. Moreover, we even had an unusual observation from another star system, the one we discussed previously and the one you see right here, where there was an exoplanet discovered in an extremely similar orbit to what we believe Planet 9 would have as well. Very eccentric, very far away from the star and potentially very similar properties to Planet 9. And so this physically showed us that such planets are definitely possible. And so if possible around HD 106 906, why not the solar system? But essentially by 2024 we were back to square one. Despite extended search, nothing was discovered, which is why certain researchers wanted to see if they can find more evidence or potentially find a better way to discover where it actually is. For example, currently it's believed to be maybe only about 5 masses of planet Earth with the average distance of about 500 AU or about 13 times as far away as Pluto is from the Sun. And so as a result, it would still be somewhat challenging to find it even with modern telescopes, with this new research actually claiming strongest statistical evidence so far. Once again focusing on the extreme trans-Neptunian objects, hundreds of which have been discovered by a lot of recent surveys such as DESI I mentioned previously. For example, there was an object discovered that was even more extreme than Sedna. It now has this somewhat difficult to pronounce name. And so this time by analyzing the motion of previously overlooked TNOs, and specifically conducting simulations focusing on the evolution of their motion with and without hypothetical Planet 9, here they ended up with two very different results. And because the simulation here basically involved all possible gravitational influences, including the galactic tides from the Milky Way galaxy itself, the overall simulation was actually pretty accurate. But what exactly does this show us? Well, essentially it shows us that the simulated version with Planet 9 seems to resemble the solar system way way more than the result without Planet 9. Or just to rephrase this, the overall architecture of the solar system seems to suggest some kind of an anomaly out there, a gravitational anomaly, that creates orbital structure that we see. Without that anomaly, the solar system would look very different, with the anomaly potentially being Planet 9. Or maybe it's something else entirely, but Planet 9 just makes a little bit more sense. But that's obviously not the only explanation. Additional explanations previously even involved just the overall structure of the solar system itself. For example, maybe the Oort cloud contains a lot more mass and is structured very differently and is actually the one responsible for producing all of this, with the anomaly in this case being that cloud surrounding the solar system. That's essentially the cloud producing most of the comets. Or maybe it is a primordial black hole. Basically the idea here is that Something is gravitationally influencing things, but we just don't really know what. Luckily for us though, if it's a planet, we should be able to discover this with a lot of new telescopes that are going to be doing additional surveys in the next few years. And so if after one decade we find nothing, then all of this will have to be reassessed once again. The evidence though is pretty strong, it's just nobody really knows what's causing this. And so even if it's not a planet, we might actually discover something else about the solar system we didn't know before. And actually discovering a black hole in the solar system would technically be a much much bigger discovery. Researchers have been looking for these primordial black holes for a very long time. And you can actually learn about why in some of the videos in the description. Anyway, on that note, once we have more info or there are some updates, we'll come back and talk more about this, hopefully not in the next decade. Probably pretty soon. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.